Well, hello, my sweets and some of my sours and the in-betweens. I know some of you guys are sweet and sour, and I love you all for just the way you are, my little delectable treats. I have an audio treat for you guys. I know you said trick or treat, and I said no trick, just treat for today. How many times can I say treat in the intro? I'm not sure, but I'm going to treat it like a challenge. It's Stefan, if I haven't said that already, and the treat I'm bringing you today on a comedy advice podcast is Angela Johnson, the incredible comedian. You guys may have seen her. She blew up on YouTube, millions of views on the nail salon bit that she did. She also on Mad TV did a character, Bon Kui Kui, which she created based on an influence of her brother and a fast food worker that just blew up as well and she ended up doing an album an ep a christmas ep and toured and she also has four hour-long specials across various streaming networks netflix she had comedy central uh hulu i believe as well and she is just a fantastic person incredibly smart and very strategic in all the moves she makes so i really loved learning from her and and speaking with her it was just a pledge but hey don't take my word for it listen to the episode you can do it you just have to sit there you don't press any buttons and stick along for the ride okay you can do it you're gonna do great and i'll be taking care of you the whole time i will be nestling you with my voice saying it's okay if you are afraid at any part Please just, you can press pause quickly, take a deep breath or two, and then say, why am I freaking out? It's a comedy a podcast. It's not true crime. It's just comedy. That's all. Just comedy. Okay? All right. Perfect. I feel like I had to talk you off the ledge there, and I'm sorry, Clint, but... You know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. And you know what? I know you guys are here for me. I know you're here for Angela. So if you haven't yet, links are going to be in the show notes to follow her, buy her book, her new book, Who Do I Think I Am? Show me some love. If you haven't yet, subscribe, leave a review, follow me on the twit, the inst, the tick. These sound like hor- These sound almost like diseases when I just say the first syllable. So please follow me on social medias instead of all those weird things that I said. And I think that's it, guys. I just can't thank you enough for all the love, support, and listens you give me. So I really appreciate it. Going to give you a big hug right now. Don't make it awkward. Yep. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh, should I? Sorry. I was just feeling it. I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but I'm just going to go on into the episode. Here we go. Hi. Hey, how are you, Angela? Good. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear. Beautiful. I'm going to take off my glorious hoops because they like to hit my uh, AirPods. Oh, man. Yes, I can see the danger in there. I took mine off before <laughs> the call, so I'm good. <laughs> that is so good. Uh, it is great to see you. And you also, with the full white, the white clothes, the background, you almost look very <laughs> celestial, like an I angel. I am blurring in, yes. I am Angela. That I'm an angelic messenger. That's my name. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Amazing. And I can't wait to get elevated on this podcast with some celestial <laughs> chat. But uh, by the I'm way- I'm going to do the whole um, interview like this. <laughs> the whole thing. You, you wouldn't- you wouldn't be the first one, but uh, we, we have some fun characters here. But by the way, my name is Stefan, and it's a pleasure to officially meet you over the Zoom, nice at least. Nice to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you, Stefan. Yes. It's an absolute pleasure. And we are on a comedy advice podcast where we are going to give some advice. But first, I want to talk a little bit about my very special guest. If you guys are just now joining us, which would be very weird because it's a podcast where you click from the beginning. But joining us, very <laughs> special guest. Is she an angel? I'm not sure, but she's incredibly heavenly and talented as a comedian, actor, and author. Everybody, yes. please welcome Angela Johnson. Clap, 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 Thank clap, clap. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so excited. Angela, how are you, by the way? I'm doing well. I just got off doing um, <clears throat> two back to back weekends of shows. 
so I did San Jose improv, I did the Brea improv. Um, that was about 15 shows. So I am ready to sleep for a few days, but um, usually <laughs> that doesn't get to happen. Um, but I'm doing well, I had great, great shows. So I'm excited, I'm, I'm feeling good. Oh, that's so good. I can, it's radiating off of your aura and, and face. So it's really awesome to see. And yeah. how have the shows been getting back into it? Have you been plowing through, through COVID or have you just started to reignite the, the Angela machine in this metaphor? Well, I started in April and we started okay. off very slow with one weekend of shows a month. And we mm -hmm. just now this month, started doing like back-to-back -back weekends um we're still limiting it to only two weekends a month right now as we start to get back into things um but this this month was my busiest month since 2019 oh my gosh and i i wanted to ask too because it seems like you are just an absolute seasoned pro and not just from the comedy perspective because you've made me chuckle chortle and guffaw but also from the touring perspective where i had heard i think it was an old interview with joe coy where you were talking about um who you travel with and you've got a little crew that travels with you where some other folks might travel alone and um i think eliza schlesinger had talked about how how depressing that can be so it's really yeah. interesting to see that and then i'd also heard at one point where you had collabed with Joe Coy to do where you guys were like, okay, I might be a little weak in this market. You're strong. Mm -hmm. You're strong in the other market. I'm weak. Yeah. And so you guys were doing something like that. And so I think the strategic mind behind that is it's really cool to hear about and see because I don't hear a lot of comedians talking like that. So it's really interesting to see and hear about that. And as well as going back in, um, I was curious to see what your uh, re-debut, I don't know what we call it, just like the, the post-quarantine yeah. um, getting back into things. And so how, in terms of, I, I know you have some shows lined up as well. Um, are, how have things been in terms of pre versus post? Well, um, it's everyone's getting back to life, but adjusted. So people are still figuring out what they're comfortable with, comfortable going yeah. out to shows. And, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's interesting to see different parts of the country that are more open than others and um, mm -hmm. that are ready to just get out there and others are more reserved. Um, but it's been really, really great getting back out. And um, I, I'm not doing meet and greets right now, which is interesting. I've been doing meet and greets since sense. day one. And it's always so fun to meet people after the show and hear their personal stories. Um, mm -hmm. But with COVID and I, I know other people, other comics that are doing meet and greets and that's great for them. I personally am just trying to stay safe and healthy, especially when I'm doing like 15 shows back to back. I'm like, I can't afford to get sick. So I'm going to go ahead and just protect myself. Um, but then you even have like people like Gabe Fluffy, like he was doing a really good job protecting himself, um, on mm -hmm. his run. And then he ended up getting COVID he was the only one in his whole crew who got it. Um, so it's like, you never know, but I am happy getting back out, getting back on the stage, trying new material. Um, there's like a, a sense of response, not responsibility, but you know, I'm able to bring joy to people who are coming out of a really hard time and to be able to be a part of that solution is I, I don't take it lightly that I get to be a part of that. And so I want to make sure that the show that I'm putting on is a great show and that people are having fun, that everybody feels welcome, that everybody feels like, you know, I'm, I'm not leaving people out and, you know, I address COVID and, you know, we crack jokes, but I'm also aware that people have right. died from this and, there's people yeah. in my audience who maybe their dad died of COVID. And so, yes, it's fun to like, let's all laugh at this thing we went through. But then at the same time, there's somebody who is not really laughing at it. And so I'm, you know, careful to acknowledge those in the audience that 
did lose somebody from COVID and I'm, I thank them for coming out and experiencing joy and, and that my prayer is that they would take this joy home with them to their family, to their workplace, to their city, and that joy would remain there. And um, so it, it feels good to be able to be a part of, of that for people. That is super cool. And it's so interesting to hear about too, where I, every a lot of people had to change and adapt with the the pandemic and and everything where sometimes I mean depending on your job if you were a sandwich art, artist at at Blimpies you would have to wear a mask or if you were in travel and hospitality you might have to make some things and being a comedian as well it's like well there's this this sick elephant in the room and we want to joke about it but we also want to be mindful that this is a true yeah. tragedy for some people and it's hit some people harder than others. So yeah. it's a very delicate uh, line to, to walk. It is, That's... it is. But um, I feel like everybody had a great time at these shows and it feels good and the energy feels good in the yeah. room and, and you can feel the vibration, you know what I mean? You can feel when um, people are like vibrating at this high level and they're just like excited to be out. And um, when you're talking about things that re people relate to, you feel connected and to feel connected with the artist on stage is like, that's our dream is to connect with our fans. And mm -hmm. I know me being an audience member, when I go to shows, whether it's music or comedy, whatever, when I feel connected to the artist, you're like that much more engaged and you're that much more uh, letting go of what you're dealing with in your own life and, and just being so present in the moment. So it's been a good positive experience for me coming back out into the road. That's really cool. In terms of material, were you able to, and I'd love to talk about your, your book in just a couple of minutes, but in terms of the material going back on the road, is this all new Angela, Angela 5.0 perhaps with the four specials? Maybe this is coming to the fifth. Well, I, I had my fifth hour that I was working on before COVID and I had just mm -hmm. finished touring it and then COVID happened. So I never got to film it. So I still want to film that hour. So the hour I'm doing now is pretty much all new stuff. Um, and I'll want to film this too when it's ready. It's not ready. I'm still working stuff out. But um, I basically kind of have like an hour and 45 that I'm sitting on, you know, and I'm, so I'm bringing out this new hour to people. And at the same time wondering like, okay, I'm gonna have to practice my old hour because I need to film it at some point. You know what I mean? So it's like huh. moving forward, but still holding on to the old stuff because I haven't filmed it yet. Wow. It just amazes me what a prolific entertainer you are because beyond the, what is this? Well, six, five and a half specials or, or the six that is sixth hour that's being worked on the character that you've created with Bon Quiqui and touring after your album there and all of this ghost stories with Angela doing podcasts touring all this stuff it seems to me just saying that stuff makes my tongue tired and want to just hide back inside <laughs> my throat so yeah and with the book too another thing how are you when you approach your week do you say, okay, I'm going to focus on one thing per day, or do you block it out where you focus on a certain thing per hour? How are you able to balance so many things? I'm not really good at multitasking. So I have to set aside time for individual things. Um, mm -hmm. So if I have, like when I was working on my book and I had a deadline, everything else falls to the side like if they need hey do you want to be on this podcast hey do you want to um audition for this show I'm like I can't do anything until I finish this right here I have a deadline on Thursday so everything is gonna have to wait until after Thursday you know and I'm sure there's other people that could be like yeah okay on my lunch break I'll do this and I'm like yeah right I can't even I just have to like zone in um yeah, yeah. But it's different all the time. It depends if I'm actively touring. It depends if I have shows that week. It depends if, um, you know, the the auditions that I'm doing 
is it due on Friday or is it due tomorrow? Like, you know what I mean? Then I'll reprioritize things. Um, but I honestly don't know. It's funny because hearing you talk about all the things that I do, I'm like, dang, I'm tired of hearing you say it. But then I'm like, oh, but that's me. Oh. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm very strategic and I don't like to overwhelm myself. So the second I start feeling overwhelmed, I start like, splitting things up and being like okay let's not like for instance my ghost stories podcast is on a hiatus right now because Mm -hmm. um I am traveling back and forth from home base being LA and Nashville so we have a studio in LA and then we have a studio in Nashville but Mm -hmm. the funny thing is is I don't like doing the ghost stories podcast when I'm by myself And because I'm away from my husband when we're traveling right now, and I don't have a guaranteed person to be with me at the studio when I'm on my own, I would rather not do the ghost stories podcast because it can sometimes get a little creepy. And so I, I don't have someone to be with me right now. So I'm like, let's just go on hiatus until I have a a set schedule where I know where I'm going to be. Cause right now, like I don't, I didn't even have my flight booked home until like yesterday. Cause we're just kind of vagabond going and maybe we'll go back to yeah. Nashville on Friday. Maybe we'll go next week. I don't know. So um, until I get like an actual schedule, then I can like schedule people like to come be with me, come be my guest and that kind of stuff. I put my ghost stories on hiatus for a second. Oh, that makes sense. Total sense. I was going to share a ghost story with you, but since you're alone, I'm actually going to let it stay. Well, if you do have one, I would love to have you on the podcast and have you share it. If you really do have a ghost story, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give a, um, a little crumb of a ghost story and and an inspirational place. It's Jerome, Arizona, which is a ghost town. It used to be a, a mining town for the copper. And anyway, everybody just kind of piled out because they couldn't get any more copper. And then they turned the old hospital into a, a hotel and a little restaurant inside called the asylum. And oh. oh, so they leaned Steph, into that. They did. They did. And little Steph right here. I don't know. Little, I guess, because I was younger. I worked at the asylum. So yeah. Was it crazy? It was, uh, oh, I need to hear all these he, stories. I can't wait. So, I yeah. cannot wait. So, so we, <laughs> <laughs> we can, we could talk about that at another time when there's company present, but yeah. um, I, going back to the prioritization though, I feel like that is a pearl in the oyster of this episode, because I think that I, I don't do it as well. And I think a lot of people don't do it as well because you talked about getting to the point where you're overwhelmed and you're like, hey, this is time to focus on something and and uh, push all of the things to the side for now, reprioritize. And I feel like that is an important step, a crucial step really, when, and it happens to me too. And I feel like I have all these things and I try to multitask, but the truth, I think, I know you said you're not good at multitasking. I don't know if anybody really is. They just right. say they are and then do half-baked right multiple things. So I think the prioritization and just finding out what do I need to get done by this date and focus on it really helps with clearing our minds and being able to move on to the next thing once that's knocked out, which is really And cool. that also helps with anxiety, to be honest, because anxiety is something that I struggle with. And with when my calendar is starting to get full, or for instance, if it's just emails coming through that are like, hey, there's um, this audition, Mm -hmm. this voiceover audition, you have this interview, you have this podcast, you have, hey, do you want to do this? Um, Hey, this opportunity came through. Hey, don't forget to reply to this email. Hey, did you sign this contract? When my email starts looking like that, then I start getting overwhelmed. But then I have um, have an assistant that I work with and she helps me and puts things in my calendar. So when I start feeling overwhelmed and I'm like, just say no to everything. I don't want to do anything else. Just say no to everything then she'll help me like look at my calendar and be like, actually, all of these things are spread out. They are not going to be overwhelmed. It just, they all came in at the same time, you know? And so I 
what I do for my anxiety is to mm-hmm. spread things out and then remind myself. For instance, perfect example is yesterday I got emails um, about my book and I have to go through like a final revision of it. Just make sure like all the copyright stuff and like go through the whole thing again. We need it done by this day. And then I got a follow-up email. Okay. We also need this done by this day. And I'm like, oh, I just finished my shows and I wanted to just rest, but I have to do these things. But then I pause and I go, hold on. It's not due for two weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and not think about it at all until the end of the week. And I like give myself that time to be like, don't think about it because it's not due for two weeks. So give yourself this week to let it just leave your brain. And then I have it in my calendar at the end of the week. I'm going to start looking at that transcript and that manuscript. And, um, and that helps me prioritize. It helps me relieve things out of my brain so that I don't overwhelm myself, so that I don't feel anxiety, so that I don't say no to everything because I'm like, no, I have too much to do, you know? So um, those little tricks and tips are things that help me. Oh, man, just shucking another pearl out of the oyster of this episode that as a person that also struggles with some anxiety and has come across and encountered that that same exact scenario, maybe not to the proportions of, of you, but I've come across it where I'm like, oh my gosh, 15 emails came my way or 15 things just happened today. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I think it's really important to be like, okay, this thing isn't for another month. So don't fill up space in your head worrying about it. Exactly. Because, and at least until it gets closer to the date, because I, I love it. It's like a minimalist approach, but for your brain. Because that mm-hmm. way, I'm, I'm thinking of the worry as clutter, maybe a newspaper or a, uh, an, an extra chair. So I love this. Yeah. This is beautiful. And there's also like, um, I, you know, before I get ready to go out and do shows, I always get anxiety. And um, mm-hmm. even if I know it's going to be great, it's, you know, a city that I always have fantastic shows and there's just something my body responds in that way. And Mm -hmm. usually about maybe three days before I head out, I can feel it in my body and I can feel the things that start changing. Um, Mm -hmm. I start feeling tired or I start feeling like um, I have to take deeper breaths and I, I can feel the anxiety start to come. And uh, another trick that I do for that um, is if I get anxiety too far out in advance, like I have shows coming up in like two weeks, let's just say two weeks, and I start Mm -hmm. feeling like, okay, are my tickets selling? You know, do I need to like promote that show more? Like, okay, but Mm -hmm. um, you know, like whatever it is, I start thinking about the shows too much. I Mm -hmm. won't enjoy my two weeks that I have home because I'm stressed about the job I'm about to do in two weeks. So instead of having a nice relaxing two weeks at home, I have a stress two weeks at home because I'm thinking about what I'm about to do in two weeks. In moments like that, I will tell myself, um, like I I won't um, deprive myself of feeling all the feels. Like if my body needs to feel the anxiety, needs to feel the stress, needs to feel the fear, needs to feel the anxiousness, the excitedness, like I want to allow my body to feel what it needs to feel, but I'll give myself parameters and I'll be like, okay, hey, we're not going to think about this until like three days before we have to leave because none of that stuff you can control. None of that stuff is anything that's going to help you by worrying about it. Um, so I give myself like a boundary where I'm like, okay, if we're leaving Wednesday, come Monday, you can start feeling all your feels. And that leaves me like three days of like feeling it and whatever. But at least for the other days that I'm home, I get to like be present in the moment and be with my friends, be with my family without thinking like, I have these shows coming up. Like, I hope they go well. Like, I hope people have fun. Like, what is that going to do for me in the moment? It's not going to do anything for me in the moment. But I understand that my body has to go through this process. So I will let myself go through it, but not this early like you need to enjoy your life and be present in the moment you know i we were joking about you being an angel 
before, but I think it might be <laughs> the truth because all of these things is just holy words into my ear. <laughs> <laughs> these might be some of the top three things that I, that prevent me from being one of the best humans that I can be. Um, besides maybe I'm really lazy. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, <laughs> these, these, these anxiety things, those are all things that I feel. And so, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners and, and yeah. viewers also experience that too. So I think that is a wonderful strategy for being able to do that. Cause I have had moments where I have to catch myself being like, stop thinking about this thing two weeks in advance. Yeah. Start just be with your family, be with your right. wife and kid. You don't have a and kid. Thing, you would have thought about that if you would have uh, <laughs> been thinking in the moment. But anyway. But here's ahead. the thing: when you tell when you tell yourself like, stop thinking about that thing two weeks in advance, you can't yeah, yeah. trick your body into thinking like, oh, you don't have a thing in two weeks. Like you can't trick yourself. So you just yeah you like self, I self talk. And I say, Hey, stop thinking about that thing that's happening in two weeks, you'll get to think about it. Don't worry, I'm going to let you think and feel all the things just not yet. And then it's like my body feels like peace, like, Oh, okay, so I will get to process it out. Just not yet. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I Oh, my gosh, it's like a nice anxiety kombucha, you just pour yeah. it all in. <laughs> and then when it let it ferment, and then when it's ready, yeah. then mm -hmm. you can pop it open. Yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Angela. I also wanted to ask really You're quickly welcome. about the book. Who do I think I am? Stories of Chola wishes and caviar dreams. Really excited for that book to come out. I think it's March 2022, but you can pre-order now. Yes. Link will be in the yes. show notes as well. But yes. how, how long has that been fermenting? How long have you been working on the book? So first of all, this is my first interview talking about the book. So thank you very <gasps> much. Oh, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. This is a real honor, <laughs> real treat. We just announced it like uh, two hours ago. So um, this is my first interview talking about it. I've been wanting to talk about it for a very long time, but I haven't been able to. Um, oh. I've been working on it actively for about a year. But I mean, I've been wanting to write a book for many, many years. And, you know, I had a folder on my computer that I would add stories too and that I would say these would be mm -hmm. my what my chapters would be like and you know what would I want people to feel while they're reading this book and like um all the things like and I just kept this folder on my computer but I never did anything with it and over the quarantine it was like now's the time you know so I wrote my book and I'm so excited for people to read it because it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be heartfelt. It's really honest. And, um, I think it's really going to touch people's lives. Like I, I really think people are going to love this book. I'm really proud of it. And I'm so excited. I was reading the snippet and it sounds exactly like you were talking about. I mean, you have led such an interesting life moving to LA to become an actor, become a, well, you were also a cheerleader for the Oakland Raiders, a Raiderette, mm -hmm. if you will, yes. um, and performed in the Super Bowl, which is super cool. I haven't even yes. been to a Super Bowl, even in the stands. I know. So. That's the only one I've been to. And it was an embarrassing game. We lost by over 40 points. It was ridiculous. Oh, no. I... <laughs> Oh, well, uh, hey, you know what? At least you went to a but Super I Bowl. But I, I was there. I was there. Yes. Yes. And, and the, the book was also talking about going to LA, dating stories, finding your identity. Oh, it's just Yeah. Really there's a lot of fun anecdotes in there. There's, I mean, like you said, the dating stuff, um, you know, figuring out my space, figuring out, um, yeah. you know, wanting to be this you know, chola lifestyle and mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. really having what it takes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just like, you know, figuring out who I am. And the title, mm -hmm. Who Do I Think I Am, is layered. It's not only who am I, like my identity, who do I think I am, but it's also having the audacity to dream beyond what I saw in my community. Like, who do I think I am to have this big of a dream and then go for it, you know? Oh man, man, I, I it, it is really cool because I think that that's something that I don't know if a lot of people talk about too much, but I think it's a very cool thing to cover where sometimes we just don't feel like we're worthy. To the identity point too, I know that you had talked about this on other interviews, but just, I know that 
um, one of the things that is really blown up when you first started in comedy was uh, the nail salon bit. Mm -hmm. And I know that you had talked about how, and I think in some of the parts you were being your parents and you gave them a, uh, an accent, but then yeah. as you started going and, and doing more and more comedy, you started finding a more true authentic self or version of you. Yeah. And you started telling, um, and I think your parents are like, you're fourth generation or fifth generation. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. fourth generation. Okay. My parents don't even speak Spanish. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. I remember on your third special, you had talked about that and not fancy. You had talked about uh, yeah. taking Rosetta Stone. And yeah. that might be one of my favorite bits because I used to work at Rosetta Stone. No way. I sold the stones. Wow. In, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually how I met my wife because I no ended up taking... I took Portuguese and she's Brazilian and I ended up trying to speak with her, botched it, but she thought it was cute. So we ended up starting to date. Yeah, I love that story. <laughs> well, working at Rosetta, how many languages did you learn and how many did you try to learn? Excellent question. So I tried to learn probably 15, but I learned, I already spoke Italian as I, I oh. had lived in Italy for a little while. Um, I know I look like a surfer. I don't look like I am Total. Italian at all, but, but, yeah. um, but uh, Italian and then Brazilian Portuguese. And then I took French, but I forgot basically everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. just, just those two, just those two. Yeah. My cousin, she um, speaks Spanish and English and now French because she married a Frenchman and um, they have two kids. And it's funny because um, she says like her son, like he's so French because he corrects her French and he's only like three, but his dad speaks to him in, in French all the time. So he knows the language. And so his mom, my cousin, she will say something uh -huh. in French and he'll be like, that's not how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> And he'll be like, he is so French. <laughs> that is so funny. No, 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 mama. That is not the way to say yeah. it. That's yeah. mm -mm. so good. Uh, <laughs> it, by the way, you are so good at doing accents. Obviously, if you had the time and passion to learn any language, which one, besides Spanish, let's say, yeah, which one Spanish, would you? Spanish, my own, yeah. <laughs> which, which other language would you be interested in learning? Um, if I knew Spanish already and my brain was like, hey, we have more room for another language, <laughs> I would say um, maybe French. That, that sounds like a romantic language to learn. Um, maybe yes. Chinese. Oh, okay. Maybe Chinese. Okay. Yeah, I think I would like to speak Chinese. That's a yeah. pretty smart I, choice. It's a, you know, like the Chinese, there's English. And I feel like Chinese is probably, well, it's English, Spanish, and Chinese, I think are like, probably, I, I say this very um, uneducated, but I have no idea. I'm just guessing that those are the three top spoken languages in the world. Let's Google that because I'm, con I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm interested. To, okay, so here's what I think. I think you're right on Chinese, Mandarin, I think Hindi, maybe? with with india no way okay number one <gasps> number one is chinese nice ding 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 so that would have been a good one number one is chinese number two spanish three english what wow, wow. then wow. it's hindi then it's arabic then portuguese then huh. bengali then russian then japanese and then huh. Landa, which is the Western Punjabi. Wow. Oh, English wasn't wow. even number one. That's interesting. Dang. Chinese Dang. is number one. See, good, good thought, Angela. <laughs> that is a great thought, Angela, because also if you were able to do stand up in Chinese Mandarin, that would oh be God. winning. Just done. Calendar booked. <laughs> never, never a free day ever in life. <laughs> no that yeah maybe it's better that you don't learn it maybe it's better to just <laughs> keep the a couple free days oh man awesome well we're gonna wind down with some 
advice I put in air quotes for my listeners okay. where I've got some questions from the Reddit advice column. So these are wow. some questions that we can, yeah, yeah. So these are not too serious, but this first question, it says, uh, how do you respond to the question? So what do you do in the most vaguest way possible? I'm nearing my thirties and currently unemployed. How should I respond so that the person will move on to the next topic or ignore my answer without having to explicitly lie or reveal the truth? Thanks. Steer away from specifics. So like oh, for instance, me, if I say I'm a comedian to the guy sitting next to me on the plane, oh my gosh, how often do you meet a comedian? Let's, let's uh, talk about this. Like, where have I, can I see some of your jokes somewhere? Can I, what kind of jokes do you talk uh -huh. about? Like now that getting that specific, now they have follow-up questions. Mm. Even if I say I'm an actress, oh, have I seen your work? Now they want to know that. So what I say is I'm in entertainment. I'm in the entertainment industry. At that point, I can be a producer. I could be, a, you know, production something. I don't know. Yeah. So when I want to just stay out of conversing, I just say, oh, I'm in the entertainment industry and immediately follow up with a question about them. Oh, I'm in the entertainment industry. How about you? And oh, they go, oh, I'm, I'm in sales. Sales for what? <laughs> I like that. Oh, I really like that. That's a great strategy. So if this this person, he doesn't have a job, he's unemployed. So to be very vague, maybe it's I'm a, I make passive income because yeah. the income just I mean, if is he's unemployed so and they say, what do you do? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm a I don't know. I'm a recruiter for myself, but you can leave yeah. myself out. Then nobody wants to talk about recruiters. So I think you're good. Yeah. I'm self-employed. Oh, I, I, like, I like that. I'm self Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I pay myself $0 an yeah. hour. So Yeah, I'm self-employed. What do you do? Social media, usually. <laughs> um, yes, I am a, I'm also a server. I make myself food. This is great. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> I like that. Great answer. Great answer. All right, we've got one more question. This one is, I am a 31-year-old male thinking about proposing to my 20 year old female girlfriend. We've been together for about 10 months. I can see her by my side for the rest of my life. I'm pretty sure she feels the same way too. She really makes me happy. Even if we we're just sitting on the couch watching TV. Oh, am I jumping the gun? Okay. First of all, anytime somebody says, I want to propose, I feel this way about a person. And I think they feel the same way. Jump in the gun. I'm going to need you to communicate and know that they feel the same way to have a conversation about marriage. Hey, what are your thoughts about marriage? Hey, what do you think about kids? Hey, blah, 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 blah. Like I, I, this is how I feel about you. I love you. Um, I can see myself with you and I love how you are with my mom. I love how you are with my family and you just fit right in and, and when they say the things right back to you, like, oh, my God, same, I love blah, 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 then, yeah, go for it. And if they're like, oh, my God, thank you, then maybe <laughs> hold the beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love, I love that. And I couldn't agree more. I remember my wife and I, we ended up getting married. I proposed to her a year after our first kiss. But we talked a lot about everything, really. But we also talked about marriage. And it was yeah. not a surprise. I had her help me, give me guidance, let's say, on picking out a ring. Because yeah. I was not going to give her something that was just a surprise and awful. So Same, I, same, same. I, I think you're absolutely right with the talking. When If somebody says, I think they feel the same, they need to dive deeper into that relationship and mm -hmm. be able to... See if the other person actually feels the same. Yep. So smart. That's my advice and I'm sticking to it. Oh man. Well, that is the end of the podcast and the end of the episode. Angela, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me about your new book and everything. It's just, it's been an absolute pleasure. 
Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for being my first interview about my book. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. And I was going to say, I know we've got your book. That's going to be in the show notes for pre-order. What else have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Where can people follow you? All that good stuff. Um, I'm getting back on the road. So you can go to my website, Angela.com. See when I'm coming to a city near you. And yeah, come see a live show. That's the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. What a treat. If you haven't yet, please follow Angela. Pre-order that book of hers and show her some support. Show me some support. Please subscribe, leave a review. That's what makes this world go round. The world of a comedy advice podcast. It's an interesting place. It's kind of like Pangea right now. Uh, So we're like 250 million years behind the regular world that we live in, but we'll get there. The continents will separate. You guys will start to see some additional stuff from the old Steph Meister, and, but it'll happen. And you guys will be like, you know what? I was there when Steph was nothing but a dinosaur, nothing but a fossil. And he turned into, I'm not sure if that's how evolution works, but you know, you're not here for the science. You're here for the comedy. That's what it's for. All right, guys, big old smooch. Mwah. Ciao.